Um, so we're going to record the meeting now so that um, anyone can tune into our YouTube page. You just look up the Mississauga Nation on YouTube and you can uh, find our little channel and we have videos of all of the workshops and different videos we've done over the year. Um, so you can catch up there or look back if there's anything, but feel free to come off mute and ask questions of Sandra. Um, make sure you check out the Mississauga Nation website too at www.mississauganation.com. There's a ton of great stuff in there uh, to look over. Uh, and Kim and Casey with Jonathan Taylor and Mary Alice have been working up a uh, bunch of new videos that are going to go out with all of our um, flashcards for Anishinaabe uh, words. So there'll be videos of all that coming up uh, in the next couple of days too. So it's very exciting times over here at the Mississauga Nation. And uh, stay tuned for more. Uh, but I think we can turn it over to you, Sandra. I'll let anyone in that, uh, that comes in late. And the floor is yours. Everyone should be able to see you and then also your table. Yeah, so, so thank you for the opportunity to do this tonight. And, and I certainly welcome everybody who was brave enough to join. <laughs> uh, have any of you tufted before? Nope. No. That's, that's, a, that's a whole lot of quiet. Okay. So I want to show you some tufted pieces, not, not all that I've done, but pieces that um, I have. And I want to start by showing you two pieces. One is a piece that I bought um, in Whitehorse when I was in Whitehorse one time. I saw this hanging in the North End Gallery. And, and I thought, oh my God, that's so beautiful. And so it's, it's done to represent uh, fireweed. And so this is the first piece. And so this is moose hair, this isn't caribou hair. This is the first piece of, I'm wrong, it's caribou. Done by a woman named Gladys Lavallee. So that was the first piece that I ever had. And I, I just, I was so taken by it. I thought, geez, that's beautiful work. And then in 19, no, 2016, 17, I lived in the Yukon. I lived in Dawson City in the Yukon. And this woman who lives there, uh, her name is Faye Chamberlain. Uh, Faye, and I, and I want you to Google her because Faye is the woman who taught me to tuft. Either, either Google Faye, F-A-Y-E, C-H-A-M-B-E-R-L-A-I-N. Either Google Faye Chamberlain or Faye Chamberlain uh, caribou hair tufting. So I taught uh, Faye to do quill work and she taught me to do tufting. And she did this piece for me before I left the Yukon. We made a trade. Um, I, I gave her quills, dyed quills, and like all the things to get her going with quilling. And I took her out and taught her how to harvest the bark and all of it. And so in our, our trade was, I taught her that and gave her those supplies and she taught me tufting and she made this piece for me. And Faye is really famous for putting all of her tufting work on antler. So check her out. I always want to acknowledge uh, who my teachers are. So when I came back home, so I, I had started a piece that they, like her and I spent maybe, maybe 40 minutes the day that she taught me that that's the, all the time we had. And so I started working on this little piece right here. And when I came home, then I finished it. And so this is, this is the first piece I ever did. You can see my jagged beaded stems and my they're okay flowers. They're, they're not, I'm not ashamed of them, but it's my first piece that I ever did. And I've done lots of pieces since then. And I want to show you some, like, don't limit your, don't limit your knowledge to thinking all you can do is, you know, little pieces to hang on the wall. You can make little pins, little Christmas pins, you know, to hang on your shirt. That's, that's tufting. Sometimes I put them on birch bark and I do part quill work and part tufting. And those people really like those. And this one hangs in my house year round. This little snowman 
and the Christmas tree that hangs and that's on birch bark. When you do tufting on birch bark, you'll, you'll see how hard you have to pull your, your thread and how tight you have to make the knots. And if you do it on birch bark without a piece of fabric in the back, the, the thread will pull right through the bark. So um, you have to make sure that there's, uh, I use canvas behind the, the birch bark when I do it on birch bark. And I'll show you this piece that I asked Caitlin about just a minute ago, if I could show you. This is a piece that I'm working on for their community. Okay. Right out. And so this is, this is quilled. And in this corner is a tufted poppy right here. This, the center is tufted and the outside of the poppy is tufted. So this is a combination of uh, quill work and tufting. There's so many things you can do. Um, Barry and I went on a big trip in 2019 and I, I saw this bear. And so this is my interpretation of the photograph of the bear that I saw there. And that just hangs in my home here. And then really when I do tufting, I, I really want to honor you know, our, our designs, our, our beadwork flower designs. And so I try to do, you know, I try to incorporate the, the flowers as much as possible. And primarily when you see tufting, it generally, not always, but generally is flowers. And so that's what we're, that's what I'm gonna teach you tonight is flowers. Um, and so in the, oh, hand me those, Here's something else that I tufted. Like, see my vamps on my slippers? Ooh. Nice. <clears throat> and I made a pair for Christina too on, um, um, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Pendleton blanket, Pendleton blanket uh, fabric. And so I made these ones for her and they keep our feet nice and warm. There's lots of things you can do with, you know, just don't, don't limit your, your imagination to my limitations. Uh, once you learn how to do this, you can do so many things. So, so don't limit yourself. So anybody have any questions so far? All right. In your kit that you got, and I'm, I apologize that I had to put everybody's kits in a plastic bag, I hate plastic. And I try not to use it, but I didn't have anything else to put them in. So I had to put them in plastic. So in your kits, you will have got like lots of hair, caribou hair. You can see mine sitting on the table there. And you, you would have got a piece of um, velvet that's got canvas on the back of it. And the, the canvas is just to make it sturdier. And so I kind of finished these pieces up a little bit to give you an idea of when you get the tufting on it, like I surged the edges so that it's not gonna fray, but you can finish it up. I put bias tape around this one and I just put some rickrack around this one and then turned the edges over. Tonight for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna demonstrate on a piece of white. And, and I think that'll just help you see clearer what we're doing. So you will have received a piece of <clears throat> uh, fabric to do your tufting on. You will have got a little needle to, to sew, to, to thread the, the sinew with. You will have got hair and you will have got sinew. And then my little note said, you have to have a pair of sharp pointed scissors and uh, you have to, had to separate your sinew. And, and I didn't mean that you had to separate the colors from each other. I just meant that you had to take the sinew, like every piece of sinew, when you pull it off the roll, separates into lots of different strands. And so what I wanted you to do was to separate it into strands like that. So that's what that was about. So, oh yeah, and you have Band-Aids. Did anybody wonder what the Band-Aids were for? yourself. <laughs> As we go along tonight, you'll, you'll know what the band-aids are for. If you look at my fingers, 
I don't know if you can see this. There's a cut in my finger right there. There's a cut in this finger right here. Sometimes the cuts are over here. So depending on how you pull your knots tonight, how you pull those threads, you have to pull them so tight. I cut my fingers all the time. But if I put a Band-Aid around that part of my finger, it prevents it from getting cut. So sometimes I'm working away and I, I'm just, I can't be bothered to get up and get a Band-Aid. So um, I, I made sure that I put Band-Aids in everybody's package. So, so don't put them on yet. Wait until you see where the pressure is on your work on, or on your hands when you're working. So, so let's start. You've all got many colors of hair and you've all got a, something that resembles green. And we're going to take us, and, I, and I'll demonstrate this before I get you to do it. We're gonna take a single strand of sinew that you've pulled apart. And like I said, the knots are, you know, when Faye taught me this, she said to me that the knots are the most important thing that you do when you do tufting. And she's absolutely right. So, we're going to we're going to when we start we're going to thread the needle with the sinew we're going to come up from the back where we want to start on our project and then we're going to go down not in exactly the same hole but really really close to it you you want your your threads to be really close to each other but not on top of each other and then you're going to take one of those little um, bunches of hair that's got the leather attached to it still. And so I'm going to take a, a greeny colored bunch. And I'm going to put it in then to the loop. You can see the loop here. You can see it against the white fabric. I'm going to put that inside the loop. I'm going to pull on the loop and I'm going to get it in about the middle of the hair. So there's about as much hair going uh, south as there is going north. And then you're going to flip it over and you have to make sure now that, that there's, a, there's a fabric between the two, the two threads. And then what we're going to do a reef knot. You know a reef knot is right over left and under left over right and under. So we're gonna take the right hand thread and we're gonna whip it around in the through there twice. So we're going around twice. And then we're gonna pull it and we are gonna pull it harder than you ever imagined you could pull a thread. You can almost hear the hair crunch underneath. You pull it so hard. And when you pull it, just this first knot, feel it and if it's if it's good and tight and good and secure in there we're good we're we're rocking then so pull 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 and go back then and finish your reef knot so you go right over left and under and you were doing going around twice and get the left hand thread and go around twice again and pull again and same thing pull 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 and and I can tell this is where I need my band-aids. Sometimes it's there, but tonight I seem to be pulling with my index fingers. Pull, 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 pull. And then do it one more time. Around twice, pull, and then you can clip those off. And they go over in file 13 next to me here, to the garbage can. And I told you there's gonna be hair everywhere. There's gonna be hair everywhere. You should see this room when I have a class in this room. Oh my goodness. Sam, do you use, okay. Sam, if you're using say pink tufting, do you use the pink sinew to match it or do you, can you use it? No, it totally doesn't matter because you don't okay. ever see the, you don't ever see the sinew on the hair. Okay. And if you do see it, your knot's not tight enough. Okay, so then, so I have to tell you, when Faye taught me this, she didn't teach me to leave the rawhide on. This is a little thing that I've kind of figured out on my own. I, I feel like I have better control of the hair 
and where it's going and what it's doing if I leave this little piece of rawhide on. So once I get those knots tied and it's good and tight, not going to come apart, then I clip that rawhide off with my scissors. And then that goes in the garbage. So this is going to become now the center of the flower I'm going to make. And I'm going to show you how you cut this. So it's way too big. Like it's just ginormous for um, the center of a flower. So we're going to trim it up. And you want it to be about, oh, I don't know, half an inch across. When you look at, when you look at these ones, we're going to do flowers with six petals. If you look at these ones, this flower has six petals. Uh, this one has six. This one has, I think, seven. Maybe eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. But then I filled in this whole section inside here. So we're going to do six, six petals tonight. Six petal flowers. If you do, if you have hair that's quite short, then you'll get a smaller flower for sure. And if your hair, if the hair is quite long, you can you can trim it longer, leave it longer, and and you get a, a bigger flower. So when you start trimming. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm trimming the, the row of hair um, closest to the fabric. And I'm just starting going around in a circle. It's almost like you've got to imagine or see through the hair to, to imagine where that circle is. And so you cut that hair away. And then that hair goes somewhere near the garbage can, maybe in it. And then, and then you keep trimming around and, and you always start trimming from the bottom and the bottom is going to be the outside circumference of the flower you're making. So trim, trim less hair at first and, and you can always trim it up more later. So you can see now under here, I've got this whole row of hair that's been cut. So then you start trimming that up. And again, I'm trimming it from the bottom. Sandra, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, with the amount of hairs that you're grabbing, how many are you like, which comedy in a bundle, like maybe 15 hairs or 20? So in your kit, all of the hair would be attached to a little piece of rawhide. Right every one of those little bunches is what you're working with to make a petal. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't separate those out. I mean, unless you want to and you, no, don't do that. Okay. That, that's a lot of work, but that, that's, I think it's unnecessary. Okay. So I, I wanna show you this. I'm just gonna shake it off in the garbage can and some of it went in. And so here we now have a really wonky, weird shaped uh, petal. So I'm going to continue trimming it up. And there's still some long hairs on it that need to be cut up on the top. And it, it's really cool when you, when you get doing this and you combine a little patch of pink and a little patch of white and you get a, a multicolored petal like there's you know there's so many things you can do <clears throat> so let me shake off the hair and here's another way that you can get the hair the cut hair off of this and this really helps spread the hair around in your room if you do this <laughs> It's really effective to get rid of the hair that you're, you're cut, but it, it makes your room a really big mess. So then you trim, trim, trim. Like you really spend a lot of time trimming these petals to get it the shape you want, to get it nice and round, to get all the long hair pieces off of it. So start somewhere, take your little square, whatever color of, uh, velvet you got that's got canvas on the back. Start somewhere like in a little bit so you've got room for the center and the petals. 
start in, you know, it, uh, like an inch and a half from each side, maybe a little bit more, a couple inches, and, and get your sinew and start, you know, thread your needle with your one strand of sinew and make a loop come up from the back and then down right beside it. And then put your first bunch of hair in. And I gave everybody a variety of colors of hair. So my intent tonight wasn't that you would finish a masterpiece. My intent for tonight was that you would learn how to do it. And then after tonight, you can create whatever masterpieces you want. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, I do. Um, okay. Do we not our sinew? Like I'm so new. Okay. Let me let me show you. Yeah. You don't knot it like at the end of it. You just leave it, leave it the way it is. Put it through the the needle, and so come up from the back, down at the front. Right, be, right beside, but not in the same hole. They have to be separate. So you, you've got a loop then. And then you put your hair inside that loop and you, you then you turn it over. And so were you not on yet when I was saying about making the knot and how you have to make it so tight? Maybe not. Okay, so let me let me show you again. Let me show this again. It's a, it's a good thing to review anyway. So you take one of your bunches of hair. I'm going to take a red bunch. And you put it then in your loop, in the loop of your sinew. Grab the sinew from the back of the fabric. And pull down on the hair. And, and you should have, like this, the sinew should be in about the middle of the hair as much going south as going north. And then when you have, so, so there's no knots yet, but the knots are the most important part of this project. <clears throat> and we're going to do reef knots. So take the right thread and go around the left one twice. And then pull like you are crazy. Pull, 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 pull. Pull it as tight as you can pull it and then pull it tighter still. That's how tight it has to be. You don't ever see the sinew on the hair once, once you turn it over. So you've got that pulled with that first loop around, the first part of the reef knot. Then you take the left side, you go around the right hand side of the sinew twice, pull again and same thing. Pull, 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 pull. This is when you find out how muscular your hands and your arms are. And then do it a third time and pull again, and then you can clip it off. So that's how you start. Does, does that help you? Yes, thank you. Okay, all right. Okay, so everybody go ahead and get their first. Um, this, so this is the center of your flower, whatever color you want the center of your flower to be. I chose this green that died kind of funny and so half of it's green and half of it's brown. If you have any questions, just, just turn your sound on and ask away. So Sam, I was by your house yesterday and I didn't see the caribou outside. Barry got them oh. out walking. Yeah, no, Kim. We had them in yesterday because it was too hot out for them. Oh, okay. He wasn't yeah. vacuuming them, was he? <laughs> no, no. He only vacuums the flower beds. And, and Tom said, I you would do the same thing. I said, uh, I have done the same thing. That's hilarious. You know, at the old house, we used to raise chickens and turkeys yeah. and we'd kill them in the yard in the fall when they were ready. Kids were all at home. They'd help. 
and there'd be little feathers left all over the ground after he raked up the ground and then he'd get his shop back and he'd go and he'd he'd shop back up all the little feathers that were left in the yard and i don't see anything wrong with that and you know you know barry turns bowls hey he so he'll be he, he turns bowls so he'll oh. be in his workshop working away with wood and he'll be covered in sawdust from head to toe and he comes up and he walks around in the house like you know like he's clean but but there he is out in the yard vacuuming the flower bed for god's sake well the house is not his domain it's yours right so he can make right it. and so the look i get when i say barry you're covered in sawdust <laughs> so i have to get really um cross with him and say barry if you do this again i'm going to divorce you you're going to be out the door. Then he, then he does. That is, then he changes his clothes for about three times, and then we're back again. Yeah. And I haven't kicked him out yet, of course. <laughs> Why would I kick out somebody who vacuums my flower beds? Right. Right. So, so pay attention to this little button that you're making for the center of your flower. It's just a nice little knob sitting there a little button <clears throat> and then make sure what when you you know look at it from every angle when you're done cutting to make sure that it's smooth all the way around trimmed up nice i wonder if this would be an easier thing for people who who cut hair i don't know So I have a question. Yep. Once you put your um, little piece of hair through your loop. Yeah. Do you, is that all you do? Like, because do you go back over or that's it? Do I make it, do I go through so it again? Just, no, no, no. Just one okay. time. Okay. Yep. Just one time. And then, and then. Who am I? Who's asking that? Faith. Oh, hi, Faith. I thought that was your voice. So then, after you're done that, Faith, then you the, you you clip the rawhide off, the hard piece of leather, yeah. and then you've just then you've just got hair, and then you start cutting. Okay. Cutting, cutting, cutting. And and I'll tell you a little secret. If you use your vacuum to vacuum up the caribou hair that gets all over. Um, it's going to plug the filter of your vacuum real fast. So when, I, when I'm cleaning up, I always uh, sweep as much as I can. And then I get a, wet, a damp rag. <clears throat> and I get down on my hands and knees. Like I complain about Barry vacuuming the flower bed. I get down on my hands and knees and I wipe the floor with a damp rag. And get up what I can that way. And then I vacuum. So it's pretty much cleaned up before the vacuum ever sees it. <clears throat> so when everybody's got that first center button done, let me know and then I'll show you where the next pedal goes. I have an issue. I lost my needle. <laughs> oh no. I don't know where I did with it. And see, this is the problem with Zoom. I can't just reach into my needle bin here and say, oh, here's another one. So check the floor. Yeah, I don't know what the heck I did with it. Did you have it at one point tonight? Yeah, I started my craft and then I went to use my garbage container and I'm thinking that's where it ended up. Oh no, do you have another needle that you can get? Which kind of needle is, uh, should I be looking for? Well, it's just a needle. It doesn't matter, except the eye has to be big enough for you to put the piece of sinew in. Okay. Yep, yeah, that's all. Okay, I'll go grab another one. I just- Yeah, yeah. 
Be oh, careful you don't be careful you don't step on the one that's somewhere. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's another consideration too. Um, if you're using white fabric, and I don't know that you can see this really well on this. If you're using white fabric, the dye from the, the caribou hair comes off on the fabric. So you have to be really careful with that. Uh, so I don't typically do any of this work on white fabric, only for demonstration purposes. How's it going for everybody doing that center, that first uh, little button? I'm done mine. When you, when you tie your knot at the back, make sure that you leave a little bit of the sinew sticking out so that you don't clip right at the knot. If you clip right at the knot, it's gonna come undone. I was teaching a class here uh, one time and um, the woman was tying her knots and then she was clipping them all off right at the right at the fabric and then she's like my sinew's not staying or my my hair's not staying on I don't know what's wrong with this so just just leave little bits of the sinew Kim yours is all trimmed up I yeah, I'll turn on my camera and show you and you can tell me if it looks okay. Can you see that? Yeah, is there any, is, are like are all the side hairs and all the hairs are trimmed off even? I believe so. Okay, okay. Yeah. You can see it way better than I can. Well, it was a, a little small piece of tuft, so. It wasn't like as big as the other one. So yep. I just used that one. Yeah. Yep. I figure I'll start small and work my way up. There you go. Oh, it's so soft. Isn't it lovely? Yes. So, uh, so I, I buy my caribou online. I found a place out of Winnipeg that um, sells hides. Oh. It's called bearskin world or something like that i think that's it bearskin world and they have like every kind of hide and hair and everything you could imagine and and so they're great to work with like the first caribou hide i bought from them and trust me one caribou hide will last a really long time the first one i bought from them <clears throat> i i messaged them and said hey i'd like a caribou hide but i want it to be i want it to have as much light color as you possibly can because you want the dye to be able to pick up the color, right? When you dye it. Yeah. And so they sent me pictures of ones that they had with lots of light colored hair on it. And they, they were great about making sure that the one they sent me was the one I wanted. That's a good company. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is there anybody else done that center button? I am. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I'm you good. can, okay. You can make a four petaled flower. You can make a five petaled flower. You can make a six or seven or eight petaled flower. See these ones that faded? Like these petals, these flowers here are four petals. And she does a lot of her flowers that she cuts. She cuts the petal in the shape of a heart. So the, the petals all have an indent in them there. If you look, if you check out her work, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going to do, like I said, we're going to do six petaled flowers. And so think about a six petaled flower. If, the, if this is the center, and think about how wide your your center is across and so it takes about you know less than a half an inch from the center to the edge 
And so your pedal then is going to take up as much, about as much space. So you want to come out about a half an inch and that's where your next loop is going to be out about let it, it's a little bit less than a half an inch really so put the next pedal put the next um sinew loop there and then the next pedal go directly across from it so go ahead and do those two pedals as well and like i said it doesn't matter what color of sinew you use When I'm doing this work and I'm doing it on birch bark, I, I put my, um, I, I pre-make the hole with a little, uh, little stick that I use to do quill work with. So I'm pre-make the hole in the birch bark. And then I, I go in from the top with the thread. I don't go up from the bottom because I, I want to be able to see where I'm going exactly. So it's a little bit different process. Orange. 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 Orange is not the right color. I lost my needle in the garbage can. <laughs> I had to find another one. Did you get another one? I sure did. All right. I'm up and running again. <laughs> Oh gosh, I hope nobody finds that needle in the bottom of their foot. <laughs> I think it's in my garbage can. Sure. You know how it is, so. Remember that knot has to be crazy, crazy tight. So tight that the sinew cuts your fingers. this and then I'll clean this up after. So then cutting this petal is a little bit tricky because of the button in the middle of the flower. So this is a little bit, I mean, it's the same, it's the same steps, but you want to be mindful that you don't cut the button, the, the center button. So you still want to trim it up and you have to make sure that you leave it long enough that there's not space between the center button, but it's just really touching the center button. Oh, Caitlin, did you see I got that frame beaded? Yes, I did. You noticed that, hey? Mm -hmm. I've been waiting all day for Amazon to come and deliver uh, sheet protectors so that I could put the, the poem in a sheet protector before I put it in there. And so they came like 10 minutes before I had to come downstairs and do this. <laughs>
So, so moose hair tufting is the same process, but here's my query. A moose is really dark, like it doesn't have a lot of light hair on it, like a caribou. And so I don't know how they get the care, the moose hair dyed into the colors that, you know, you might want to dye it, it into. So I think, I, I just think that caribou is a better choice when you want to dye the hair. And there's, there's a fair amount of white hair on a caribou. And so you can turn that nice bright colors like yellow and light pink, um, like colors that, that would dye a darker hair. You, you save that for the purples and like the, you save the darker hair for purples and brown and black and blue, like those colors but those nice bright light colors, you, you want to use that white hair. Have a question. Sandy? Yes. Question. So I started with the, the center um, or the pink. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I, after I put in my dark, I decided to do the purple in the as my center button is that still okay to switch up sure it is okay because it's just where it's positioning i think it's going to be too close to the outer sides why i changed it up okay but that'll work great right? that should yeah be okay. for sure okay yeah look at look at mine here um what's your name helen okay helen look at mine here like i've got my green center Right okay. sitting next to this kind of purpley color, this periwinkle color. And so right now I could make either one of those the center of the flower. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me see if I can get that to you. So that's oh, how yeah, I yeah. So yes. originally I put that pink one down. Yep. And then I thought it was too close to the edge already. So then I switched up with the purple. Yep. Yeah, it's perfect. Be fine. Okay. Yep. Yep. And there's there's kind of cool things you can do too. Helen, look look at these ones here. You know, this is kind of like a um, thistle, thistle flower. You know, oh, so it's not okay. it's not trimmed up into the, the round button at all. Oh, and you can oh. see these ones here are, are multicolored. So these petals oh, are yeah. part pink and part blue. Okay. And and I did the same thing with these blueberries. These are dark blue and kind of turquoise color. Okay. And and this flower, I did I did beads around the outside of it, and then a little purple tuft in the middle. Oh, you know, if you look okay. at the flowers that are in nature, there's almost there, there's so many things you can make that represent those flowers. So you said these these flowers that we're making that we're going to make with six petals? Yes. Okay. If you were going to make a flower with four petals or uh, five petals, you would you would make them bigger. Right? Because it still has to take up the, the whole distance around that center button. Oh, I see. Yeah. And it took me quite a long time to figure out how to get six petals pretty even, you know? So I'm gonna show you, you that tonight. And then tomorrow when you all order hair, caribou hair from bear, what did I say it's called? Bear, bear skin something. Um, then you'll be able to start experimenting and doing all kinds of things and I dye I dye all my caribou hair the same way I dye porcupine quills uh what's it called bearskin world I don't know bearskin bearskin world so sometimes I dye porcupine quills or sometimes I dye care like one of them first and then when that one's finished dying, then I'll use that dye over again to dye the quills or the hair, you know, not what, whichever one I didn't do first. 
and I use, um, sometimes I use RIT dye, which is fabric dye. And sometimes I use Halford Hides in Edmonton has a protein based dye. And it's good for dyeing natural things like feathers and leather and quills and caribou hair, those kind of things. I use uh, both. Sometimes I even combine them. Time for a band-aid. Yeah, your skin's getting split with the care with the tough the um, sinew, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost as bad as quills. Right. Yeah. I hope you all had a little giggle when you opened up your kits and you saw that there was band-aids in there. I was thinking, what is she gonna do to us tonight? Right? <laughs> this woman's crazy. What's she doing to us? So oh, Sandra's sister, um, Linda, just finished up our um, gauntlet workshop. So we have some pretty talented women in our community. What's a gauntlet? Mitts. Gauntlet. What's it called? Mittens. Yeah. Leather mitts. Say, Kim? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've had some good, uh, good workshops for the Mississauga Nation this past year. That's awesome. That's so awesome. In the midst of a pandemic, we can get together and do this. Who knew? I'd rather be in person, but this is good. Yeah, I'd rather be in person too. There's a lot of people that I've approached at New Credit here to um, do some uh, crafting over Zoom, but they're not comfortable. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Which, well, you know, it's sometimes they're older and they, they um, yeah. you know what I mean? They're not used to all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and I, yeah. I appreciate that, you know, their honesty. Yeah. Diane Salt has done a few workshops for us. Over oh, there. that's great. Yeah, she's she's amazing. She's done um medicine bag workshop and she did Christmas leather Christmas ornaments. Yep, yeah. Workshop that way. Yeah. So, so it's been good. I've anti, but she's a boy. Yeah. I've been doing quite a few workshops uh, this this winter. Um, we made ribbon skirts and bundle bags and altar blankets, feather cases, and cases. and you know it's worked. It's worked out really well. Drum bags. Yep, drum bags. That's amazing. The only one I don't like doing is um, medicine walks. I've done a few medicine walks, and it's just not the same. So oh when I do gosh, no. walks, I always tell people, pick up that medicine, feel it, smell it, taste it. That's hard to do over Zoom, right? Right. So Kim, when you do a medicine walk over Zoom, do, do the participants go out in their area and walk as well? Um, yes, some do. Sometimes it's just showing them the medicines and I've done workshops where I've sent the medicines to them in brown right. bags and I've labeled them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just said, okay, so now open number one and let's talk about this medicine and what it's good for and, and how you can use it, whether it's a poultice or a tea or a salve. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes it works out good, sometimes not so good. Yeah.
Oh, this and is massive. Sandra, sorry if I missed it earlier. Um, no worries. So when, you're, when you're making your petals, does it matter what way the loop goes? Does that make sense? No, it doesn't matter, Caitlin, but make sure you okay. put the hair in all going in the same. Like if you're putting the leather side close to that center button every time, make sure you put it close it. to make, make sure you put it facing towards that button every time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My first pedal. Um, yeah. I wanted to do it the other way and I didn't <laughs> with the light you colored know? inside and you know what I mean? Yeah. And have cut it already? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, I, start... it, I realized I was like, oh, <laughs> darn. those are really good lessons for us. So there's my, there's my first two petals around my button. See, they're all pretty much the same size. There's no, there's no uh, space that you can see. You can't see any of the white fabric in on either side of the white or of the green button. That's gonna be a pretty flower. Party, party, party. What time is it seven o'clock? Yeah, I will. How's everybody else doing with their with their um, petals? Has anybody got their flower done? No. <laughs> How's everybody else doing? Oh, you're doing fast. I'm doing the, I'm at like three. Oh, hold that up closer to the, the camera so I can see. Ugh. Good job, look at you. Yeah, it's, it's fun, that's <laughs> fun, really fun. I'm sorry, Chris, that's awesome, keep going. Oh, Laura. Laura, are you an overachiever? <laughs> oh, it's like, it's like my life. Yeah. Right. Like be faster. No, I, this is really cool though. I think this is really relaxing. One of those talented. Yeah. She's one of those talented women that can do anything. Right. Love to sew though. Yes. You love to sew. Yeah, I've been I've been picking up quilting, and uh, that's fun. That's really fun. Yeah, that's awesome, eh? Yeah. A little bit addictive. Yes. Well, sewing is, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember when I first learned to sew, I didn't know how to sew anything. But I went to Albuquerque with some friends and I came home with a, a whole suitcase full of fabric. This is 20, uh, my, um, so I came home with this whole suitcase full of fabric, but I didn't know how to sew. And my cousin came and taught me to make a pair of shorts. So I made shorts for everybody I knew. And then I thought, well, pants are just long shorts. So I made pants. Well, boxer shorts for the boys are just like shorts. So I can make them boxer shorts. So I made them tons of boxer shorts. And then it's like, oh, a skirt's gotta be easier than pants because there's no legs in a skirt. So I made skirts. Skirts and matching vests. Skirts, skirts and matching vests. Yes, that's and right. Shorts and matching vests. And and then like now it's now it's just turned into something crazy. Sandra makes regalias for all over, everywhere. Um, she made the regalias for the Pan Am. She makes regalias for uh, most of the kids, her and her sister in the community. Um, in other communities. So, yeah. And I think you're doing a ribbon shirt. Yeah, workshop. with the men in the community. Yeah, Tom's on that. Is he? Well, yes. if we ever actually get to do it. I know. Because there's no programming face to face again in May. And, and yeah. Kelly and I had picked a new date for May. 
And so now it will be June, provided the pandemic is behaving itself enough that we can do face-to-face -face programming, because I would not be comfortable doing uh, ribbon shirts with men over oh, Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> so no, it, but with one community, I'm doing basic sewing. So I put together kits and, and I teach them how to just make their machines work basically. And so <clears throat> I teach them how to uh, stitch straight stitches, zigzag stitches, how to back up, go forward, um, how to sew on bias tape, how to sew on ribbons, just basic, basic sewing. And then at the end, we make a little medicine bag like a little cloth medicine bag that they can put tobacco or sage or whatever in. And they are so happy with themselves when they make this little medicine bag. And that's doable over Zoom. Although um, everybody, you know, everybody has different brands of sewing machines. And <clears throat> so I have to I have to pretend like I know what to do with their brand of sewing machine. <laughs> and sometimes I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. But, but we figure it out. You know, machines now have diagrams on them, how to thread them and how the bobbin goes in. So as long as we follow that, we're good. Over the winter, I put together kits, like I, I put together kits and send them out to people. I put together over a hundred kits in the winter. And then yeah. we made we made all kinds of things. Me too. I'm running to the post office to mail them out. Right? Yeah. I think it's amazing because you know we're we're still contributing to your businesses. And keeping you keeping you know native people yeah. that that we I know anyways in business and and I really appreciate that because you guys are there for me. Always. Well, I really I really appreciate the opportunity for my business to be supported. You know, like otherwise, what would I be doing? I, I don't know. Yeah, don't this know is what. this COVID has hit businesses very very hard, and it just. It hurts my heart when I see little businesses folding because they just, they can't make it. Right. Um, before Christmas, I was like crazy busy and I had to hire a student to come in and help me. And now I'm lucky if I average one person a week. Oh so yeah, yeah, it's, it's really hit. I'm very lucky because I don't have that big overhead that other right. businesses have right because my store is just outside my door traffic sometimes in the morning is crazy with chipmunks and squirrels but and dewworms it's hard to get down a driveway with dewworms right because i hate dewworms i think they're the worst things in the world <laughs> this is why i don't go fishing I can't. the robins the robins would disagree with you uh-huh it's true they i have hundreds of robins in my yard every day but uh yeah if if it wasn't for um sending out kits and and things like that I don't know what I'd do I'd, I'd just be devastated and I keep yeah. thinking to myself why can't you people just two weeks that's all it's going to be two weeks just stay home for two weeks right but they, they, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand if they don't think it's real or, or they think that it's not going to happen to them. I mean, I can take them up to our graveyard and show them a tombstone that's got eight people on it that died the last time we had a pandemic in one family. Right. And tell them, like, this is real. Just two weeks. That's all we're asking. Two weeks. But you know, until the pandemic is under control in every country, it's yeah. not going to be under control in any country That's because true. we travel. I think like the chicken pox, um, we're gonna to have to be vaccinated at birth for this. Um, we'll probably never see an end to it in my lifetime. Right. My flower looks like it's drunk. 
does it? <laughs> Take your time and trim, trim, trim little bits, like little time. pieces of short hair, trim, 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 trim. So then when you get the second petal on, if you just look at mine for a second, yeah, you, you have to look at it then and judge how much space do I need for each of these last two petals that are going on. And so you move it out about a half an inch, less than half an inch from the edge of the center button, about a half an inch from the petal, the, the, the outside petal that you're putting it next to. So you have to gauge where that petal is going. And I think I've got my threads in the wrong place now that I look at it. I think this thread should be moved over closer to the orange petal or to the purple petal a little bit more. So that's how you, the next, the next two petals on here, you gauge based on those two that are across from each other. And then put them on and trim, 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 trim. I'm only starting my second one, right? Because I'm such a perfectionist and it gets in my way. That's okay. And I'm Take scared. Your time. To, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking at it. So the little, you know, the little um, uh, rawhide that's on there? Yeah. What part, where does that go? Inwards? Whatever, wherever you want it to go. Oh, okay. But wherever you put it, put it this in this, like in the right, Pay attention to the, like if it's facing in towards the center. Yeah. Make sure that all of the petals have it facing in towards the center. Okay. And that's really important for hair that like this green hair that I'm using because it didn't die. It, it, it didn't all die the same. The, the, the part of the hair that's close to the leather is tan colored and the end is green. So for sure, I want, I want that to go on so that if I've got the light part on one of the petals facing the center, I want the light part to face the center all the way around. Okay. God, I hope I said that so that it made sense. That did. Oh, good. That was my mistake, Faith. What's that? Um, I should have put the rawhide towards the center. Okay. The center one, because I want it a lighter color in the center and then the more vibrant color on the outside. Well, I'm looking at the purple and that's that's what this one is. It's it's really light on the inside here and then at the out at the edges, it's darker. But this is oh, my first time, so. Exactly. And I love the shirts that you make, Stacy. Oh, They're beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I've had one underway for how long now? A year, maybe more. I'm doing it um, for him that's uh, water, water clan, fish clan, turtle clan colors mm -hmm. that's the next one for him nice. the first one that I started I started it for him I got it on the table and I started making the design for it and then everybody needed masks and his fabric got turned into masks <laughs> <laughs> but now I've replaced it and, and I'm good to go again I've made over 2,000 masks. Wow. That kept me busy. And now I'm making them with the third layer, the uh, my microbial. Oh, um, yeah. What's it, I forget what it's called, uh, with that third layer in between that's supposed to be a better protection against the variants. Yeah.
We should order some from you guys. I yes. ordered some from I ordered some from Kim when they first came out. And I love everybody loves the ones you just sent me, Kim. I get so many compliments. Thank you. She's good Anytime. that Kim. Anytime. I was talking, but I realized I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Kimberlina. I know. I do it all the time. Geez, Christina was looking through old photographs here today. Kim, did you send that one to her over, Dad? Oh, I didn't even take a picture of it. There was, we found a picture of your dad Aww. from when he worked at the band office. Oh, my God. It's a good picture. I know. Send it to me, Chris. What's that? Send it to me. Oh, I got to go find it again. Okay. That's okay. She will. I know where it is. It's in a photo album, so at least I know easy to get to. See, I was right in moving my my sinew over just a hair, a hair closer to this this little nub of uh, hair here, because now that's in the right spot. Good work, Sam. I almost want to put on some biker mitts. <laughs> <laughs> biker mitts? Yeah, that'll save my hands. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't don't hesitate to use those band-aids. No, I won't. They really do prevent the sinew from cutting through your skin. I've had a fairly large um, job I've been working on and I was days and days and days and days and days doing tufting and oh, I, I had like days and days and days I was wearing band-aids oh yeah there's another piece that I did quite a while back that's a combination of tufting and uh, um, quill work and it's, I've got it in a frame, but it's not even finished yet. But I'm going to show you. <clears throat> this is it here. Oh my God, that's beautiful. So the flowers along the bottom, well, I think most of the flowers on this are tufted. And the eagle is tufted and the snow on the mountains is tufted. But like there's quill work on this flower, the water is quill work, the fish, that eagle's carrying a fish, that's uh, birch bark with fish scales glued onto it. Um, this is really like multimedia. The, the eagle feather over here is quill work. The medicine wheel is quilled. That's, that was a that was a little bit of a intense, labor intensive project. There's so many things we can do. You guys need media attention, you know that? Why? Because it's so amazing. Well, we were supposed to have one of our media come in tonight, but her dad is pretty sick in the hospital, so Aww. yeah, Rhiannon was supposed to come in and oh, yeah, yeah how is Barry? He, um, he's got a blood infection now. Oh, He's been in the hospital since February, so. Oh, God. <clears throat> so she's trying to help Leah, like relieve Leah at the hospital. Right, right. Oh. And can Leah o only go in every other day? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course, Leah's putting on a, you know, everything's okay and I'm all right. But she's not, so. Right. That said, my uh, my uncle passed away a couple weeks ago, and um, then my auntie goes in the hospital. My auntie Carol, 
she had to get a open heart surgery and a triple bypass. Yikes. Yeah. It's scary going into the hospital. It is. Very scary going into the hospital. When Barry was sick there back in the fall and he had part of his bowel removed, uh, I could only go in every other day. Oh yeah. my God, that was awful. Is anybody getting hair on their floor? Everywhere. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm. Oh, it's stuck to my clothes. Yes. When I do, if I do tufting upstairs, I sit with the vacuum right next to me, and this isn't good for the vacuum at all, but I sit with it right next to me, and I cut hair and then vacuum it up. Cut hair and vacuum it up but I'm probably going to burn the motor of the vacuum out if I keep doing that. I put my so I, apron on so I won't get it on my clothes. Oh, well, it kind of gets everywhere anyway. <laughs> I've been doing this. I, I tape the bag to my table and then I'm trying, I'm like trying to like trim in the bag. Yeah. Like I just taped it like a surging bag. Oh, that's a good one, Chris. Ooh. And then Isn't I that nice. It's, yeah. it's, it's not it's working okay. Sam. Oh, it's still on my hair. It's still on my, my clothes. Sam. <laughs> yes. I'm done. Show me. Hold it up closer, Saga. Look at you. Oh, that's fast. So now, Saga, take one of the green colors. Yeah. Like everybody got something that resembles green. And, and you, you do the leaf the same way, but you cut it a different shape. Like you cut, if you look at these ones, you cut it like more round at the top and then point it at the end. Okay. You put the leaf right next to the flower. And you can, like for every flower, you can do a couple leaves. Okay. The, the Faye, the woman who taught me, she does lots of leaves on her work. And I've noticed on everything that she does, she really incorporates a lot of leaves. You can see on, on this one, this antler piece she did. Like she's got leaves, leaves, leaves everywhere. And so that, like that fills in really nicely. And see the stem, see the stem on on the, like the vine of this, that's a whole different process. And that's a, like, that's a whole other night's workshop to, to figure that out. Is it tufted also? Yeah. Wow. This, this vine is, is it's, you lay the hair on and twist it and tie it down. That's what you do with that. To get that, I thought line. it was. I thought it was sweet grass. You could use. You could use. You could use anything. You could use sweet grass. You could use pine needles. You. I sometimes I use um, porcupine quills. Mm. Here's a little. Here's a little one that just hangs in my room here, that I did, and I made this fabric. Like I beat it around the edge of the, the tufting, the, the satin, and then put fabric for a bigger frame. And it's just, it's just kind of cute, you know? It's beautiful. Honoring our flowers, our flower, our beadwork designs, our, our, our floral designs that we use. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? This is where I'm at so far. Wait, how do you do that? 
So I got a oh, gap. Oh, good in job, here. Helen. I got a gap in here, so that's probably where I'll put my green. Yes, I, exactly right. Yeah. So put yeah. your leaf in there. Yeah. Yep, that's how you do that. Janice, how are you doing? Turn turn your sound on. Here we go. I'm. It's not pretty, but I had to get my um, my hair scissors out. <laughs> Can you start to see that? Right. It's okay. It's beautiful. It's you know, it is getting there. Thank you. If if you think it's too like. Fluffy? what's the word ragged like if it's not smooth yeah trim more trim 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 oh, okay yeah and just trim little wee bits at a time i've had to change my glasses like five times to see <laughs> janice i haven't seen you for a long time either i know yeah it's Good really to nice to see you yeah, nice to see you too. And thank you for this. Yeah. How's everybody else doing? If you're going to tell me, put your sound on. I don't know. I was having a hard time with, I put my um, rawhide or hide close to the center and every time I pull tight, it turned on me anyways. Oh, gee. So you're too, they're all, you're they're all, strong, honey. they're facing different directions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to figure out how to compensate for that strength that brute physical strength you have. I was teaching a woman to tuft one time and her hands are so strong, she pulled on the sinew and broke it. Like who can break sinew by pulling on it with their hands? How long are we on here tonight? Nine. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, we've got a good amount of time. I've been in training all week on Zoom, so I, I um, got off the computer at like four, four thirty, uh, and yeah. I just I just woke up at at um, five fifty eight. Oh, good timing. Yeah. You didn't want to do this, eh, Chris? No. Why? That's not something I enjoy. Hmm. You know, um, the piece that I did that weekend here that I didn't finish. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I'd rather get this one. Yeah. I find this so relaxing. I know you do. Dabbing his goodies. 
if you need to take a break and go get a drink or go to the bathroom, just, you know, take care of yourself. Hey, Kim, I'm drinking your rose petal tea tonight. You will fall asleep good tonight. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, hey Kim. Yes. <clears throat> Kim. Yes. You know the plaques I'm doing? Yes. For the seven grandfather awards? Yes. I have them done. Can you please be one? What's that? Can you show me one? I haven't well, seen I it. Won I wondered if, it, it's, if it's okay if I show one of them. Yes. Two the committee members are here. I think it's okay. Who, you and Kim? Me and Kim. Yeah. So you're okay if I do? Yeah, I'll grab one. Absolutely. I've been anxious to see them. So every year, Hiawatha has a seven grandfather gala and people in the community, well, in Hiawatha member citizens are voted for one of the grandfather teachings. And each year they get a special, whether it's a, a plaque or um, a couple years ago, Sandra's niece, Kelly, did um, wood wooden um, feathers and she burnt the uh, seven grandfather teachings and all seven different grandfather teachings in each, in each feather. So this year we've asked Sam if she would design something for us to give to those who win. So I'm anxious to see what it looks like because I haven't been able to see it. Oh, Sam, that's beautiful. Oh, nice. That is gorgeous. Oh, I'm so excited now. <laughs> so every, every one of them is a different color. Oh. And whatever color I did the tufting, I did the, bead, the beads around it in the same color. Oh, like, I'm so excited. Oh, Truth, look at that. That's gorgeous. Has um, Sherry seen them? No. Well, she yeah. saw, um, I sent her a picture of maybe of the first one. Yeah. Oh, they're I'm beautiful. the only one that's seen all of them. Oh. Yeah, I've, I'm happy with how they turned out. Oh, they're gorgeous. Well, you're going to have to think of something next year a little bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> Reach for the stars, Sam. Reach for the star. They're right? gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. And I understand we're losing Phyllis. Who oh, are we? Yeah, she's going to Alderville. As the health manager? Um, I think that's what she's going for. Yeah, I got an email just oh. saying that. She's done here on the 30th, I think it is. Oh, well. They, they, I just, I was talking to somebody there and they were optimistic that they had filled the manager's position. So yeah, maybe that's her. Yeah, I think so. Good for her. Well, not good for us. Not good for us, but good for her. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Yes. It's going to be different having a gala over Zoom, but won't it be? Yeah. I'm excited because Stan will be there. He'll make it exciting. Stan Wesley. Yeah. Yeah. He made yeah. uh it, um 
he did a little symposium for us for the Mississauga Nation, and he made it really fun. Everybody really enjoyed themselves. So our workshops awesome. um, wind up tonight, guys, and then uh, um, starting, we're not sure when, maybe May, June, somewhere in there, um, we will be having little workshops. We won't be having um, them every month. I don't believe because um, now that we've got everybody knowing who the Mississauga Nation is and where we are, um, we move on to now trying to build the Mississauga Nation, which is, you know, the governance, the justice. Um, Casey will be handling. Which one do you handle, Case? Economic development. Yeah, economic development. Casey will be taking care of that. Sean, I believe, is doing the governance. Um, Amanda Sayers has been asked to start the justice. I'll be handling the culture and traditional aspect of it. And I'm Naomi, I'm not sure where she'll be sitting from Alderville First Nation. Amanda and Naomi just joined our team um, last week or the week before. But keep watch on our Facebook page for upcoming workshops. We don't know how many we'll, we'll be doing the following year. We will still be doing hopefully our orange t-shirt day. We'll also um, coming up this week, hopefully, I'm just waiting for um, Jonathan Taylor out in Curve Lake to make sure that I have all my words spelled properly. I always send them to him or Aunt Mary just to make sure that those words are, are spelled properly and that uh, I did say them right. Um, and they'll be going up sometime, hopefully this week. Um, what else do we have coming up? Oh, Laura, I'm still waiting for your information. Okay, okay. I, 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 uh, I'm renoing an entire level of my house. I know. And also trying to build a greenhouse because I'm crazy. Um, but but I, I actually start back to work soon. I seen that the baby designed your greenhouse for you. Yeah. It's amazing. She wants to just be a big girl really quick. She's only yes. 10 months old. I know. So, and then if you could ask Brian to send me a couple kids, small blurbs, that would be great. If you know somebody in your community, a youth that you'd like to honor and, and see up on the Mississauga um, Facebook page, please send me that information, send me some pictures, send me a little blurb. And the youth are really liking it. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback that the youth are really enjoying this. Um, today, awesome. Amanda Sayers went up and uh, she had a message that she wanted to send out to the youth about um, her struggles as she, when she was younger and her disabilities and how she overcame those and, and where she is now. So that I thought that was just perfect. Um, we've done um, Nate Thompson that lives in Hiawatha First Nation. And Nate was picked for the Canada team um, for football and he went down to Florida and he played for the Canada team down there. Uh, we've done Kenny um, out in uh, Curve Lake. Kenny has a garden every year and she harvests um, her, her garden and then she makes it into jellies and pickles and relishes. And she gives those out to the seniors at Curve Lake First Nation. So we honored her. So anything like that, you know, they've done so well in school, please, please send me those. Um, we're trying very hard to build up our youth. We've lost so many to suicide these past couple of years that we're trying to let the youth know that they're loved and they are, they are wanted and they're our future. So we really need to build those youths up. And one of the ways we're doing it is honoring them on our Facebook. Build them up. Pardon? 
Well, that's awesome. That, that's awesome that we're, that, you know, building young people up. That's what we yeah. need to and do. And then we honor, um, you know, somebody like we did George Copaway, the author. We did Elsie Knott, the first um, female chief in Curve Lake, or the first female chief ever, and she's from Curve Lake. We've done Harry LaForm from the Credit. Yeah. He's a judge. We've done Lauren Graham. He's an actor. Um, who else have we done? Oh, Fred Simpson was the Olympic runner. So if you, and um, today we did, I uh, can't remember. Who, oh, the prior chief, uh, Douglas Daybutch from uh, Mississauga Nation. So if you know of somebody that you'd like to honor, please send it in to us. Just send me a message on the Facebook page and say, Kim, I'd like to honor this person and do that for me. And then we put them up and then we've also started putting up, I don't know if you guys know um, the story of the Prince of Wales coming to Hiawatha. And he, we used to be called the Mississaugas of Rice Lake and he came over here and Hiawatha was his favorite poem. And he renamed Hiawatha to Hiawatha First Nation. And when he was here, he was presented with some beautiful artwork. So porcupine quill work. Yeah. Um, some beading, stuff like that. And that's coming to Canada, actually to Hiawatha First Nation in 2023. And it's going to be on display for the six nations to come see. So I've been putting little blurbs up there. Lori Beavis from Hiawatha First Nation went over to Isle of Wight. She went over to visit a relative over there. And while she was at Isle of Wight, she came across these pieces from people from Hiawatha, Scugog, Curve Lake, um, Mississauga, um, the credit that had honored the Prince of Wales with their work. So it's, bringing, it's being brought over here in 2023, COVID hopefully will be settled down by then. And uh, Lori uh, found these pieces over there and working with the museum over there. She's a, a museum courier here and she has um, got the okay to bring them over here for a few months so that people can come see this beautiful, beautiful porcupine. The quill work is just amazing, eh, Sam? Yes, it is. It sure is. Yeah, so I've been putting little um, blurbs up there on Fridays about that. So we're doing like a series. So keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. And, and as we get closer to 2023, dates will go up and, and times and places and all of that. And hopefully that COVID will agree with us. So was there some of that quill work that was done from a woman in Alderville? I believe so, Sam. I'll have to double check I just, it again. I just saw pictures of it the other day. And I forget what the name was, but I thought, oh, I wonder if that's Alderville. Hmm. Don't forget that a lot of um, Alderville people came to Hiawatha to live and a lot of Hiawatha people went to Alderville to live because it was so easy just to go across the lake, right? Yeah. Like Fred Simpson is from um, Alderville, but he lived in Hiawatha because he married my great aunt Susan. Oh, okay. How's everybody doing tonight? There you are. I was just <laughs> I, Yeah, I was at a, on another Zoom with the Toronto Islands. They've been having meetings. Uh -huh. So we got some big projects going on over there. Did you make so does something? Everybody, does everybody have one flower done? Yep, yep, yep. And you did a leaf or leaves around around it. Anna did okay. peacocks. You did what? Peacocks. Show me. <laughs> what did she say? 
Oh, yes, you did. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then I'm going to put grass underneath so the peacocks are walking around. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. I love the peacocks. Thank you. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew you could do peacocks? Well, if you can beat whole stories, um, you can talk peacocks. Right? You can do anything. Anything is possible. Anything. So there you have it, folks. There are no limits. <laughs> Let your artistic lion out or peacock out. Let your inner peacock out. That's right. <laughs> what kind of a video workshop did I stumble on? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Anything's liable to happen. At our last workshop, we had to keep reminding Linda that, you know, this is being recorded, Linda. This is a family Linda. channel, Linda. It was all those bad ones from Curve Lake. <laughs> We're talented. <laughs> I think there's enough caribou hair in each of your kits to do maybe five or six flowers. And you can just do, like put them in a, a little collection, you know, like I did this one. Don't hesitate to put some beadwork in it. And, and then you can finish that off, you know, however you want to finish that off and you can, you know, make it your piece of art, peacocks and all. <laughs> Turn that the other way. Who who made a leaf for their flower? I did. Did you get it so that it's pointed at one end and like shaped like a leaf? I tried, but you can do yeah, it. Yeah, perfect. Bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's that's as good as it gets. That's as good as your first one gets. But remember, you can do lots more. Okay. <clears throat> Don't limit yourself to one flower and one leaf. The sky's the limit. Here goes my Band-Aid. Did everybody get their sh shots? Their needles for COVID? Not I. No, not yet. Um, so I'm allergic to so many medications. Oh. That, including the flu shot. Oh wow. So I'm, I'm having con. Well, I've had conversations with my doctor, who's had conversations with the allergy specialist. And between them, they said that uh, it's worth risking with the Johnson & Johnson because it's only one injection. Oh, wow. And so I'm holding out for Johnson & Johnson and then I'll have to go into the hospital and have it injected there. So I'm, I'm nervous because of all the chatter now about Johnson & Johnson not nervous that it's not safe, but nervous that we won't get it in Canada now. And if we don't, I don't know what I'm going to do, but cry. Yeah, I've been hearing that last couple of days, they've even shut down some clinics. I had like 10,000 people's appointments. Yeah. Shut, shut down five of them in Toronto. Ugh. because they didn't get their the the vaccine in time right 
Well, Johnson and Johnson vaccine is apparently causing uh, clots, blood clots mm -hmm. in women between the ages of 18 and 40 or something. Mm -hmm. And so I don't fit into that category. And I'm, I just hope that we go ahead and get it here. It's not coming to Canada, not scheduled to come to Canada until the end of April. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of people still needing to get their shots then. Sounded like they were upset about the one that was um, being frozen that, are, that they haven't used yet. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, I hope everything works out for you. Thank you. What I learned in the process of all of my um, drug addictions is that the first time you take a medication isn't the time that you react to it typically. It's the second or subsequent time that you react to it because your body recognizes it the next or the second or next time and says, oh yeah, I remember that and I didn't like it then and I'm gonna dislike it more now. And so that's when you have a big reaction. So because Johnson & Johnson is just one, it's just a one needle, like you don't have to get two, um, the doctors have determined that the risk is reduced greatly for me because it's only one shot. And you meant drug allergies, not addictions. Oh, yeah, I meant drug allergies. <laughs> I said addictions, <laughs> drug addictions. You did say it, I laughed. Well, that's appropriate. I heard that Native Horizons got their funding to build their center again. Yes, I they, were, read they were excited. Yeah, they were oh my, excited. Yes, I guess. Wanda's been working on that for a while. Mm-hmm. No, it's wondering if they can if they can start the, the process. Cause I know a lot of the communities wasn't allowing like construction or people coming right. in there into their compute into their community yet. So now I understand why they were saying when when people were getting their second shot that it, it was it would be worse than their first one. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people, though, that have had their second shot and they haven't had any any symptoms or nothing worse than the first one. Well, thank you. Is this your last workshop or you still got more to do? This is it. This is, is our last one. one. Oh. Yeah. We should have another one maybe in a month's time when everybody has all their their final pieces. Well, we're made. gonna have on Monday night drop-ins. Um starting next Monday. Sean's gonna do up the poster and we're gonna post it. So anybody that's done um a previous workshop for us that needs help finishing up their projects can come in and do that. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to, if you just want to drop in and work on a craft and, and chat with people from all around the six Mississauga nations, we're going to be doing that. Remind them to take a picture so that we can put it in our next newsletter. I will. There's my, there's my little flower. Oh, that's beautiful, Sam. Whoa. That's I got beautiful. the petals all pretty, pretty even and the hair cut pretty, pretty good. They all have a pretty good brush cut going on there. You've been practicing on Barry? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So Sam and Barry gave each other a haircut when we went through the COVID last year. 
and they sent pictures to everybody and it was beautiful and I was going to go down there and get them to cut my hair but we had matching brush cuts yeah and you know what's the funniest thing it grew in just like normal everybody's like oh my god I wouldn't have done that it'll grow and who's going to see it nobody's going to see it nobody coming in nobody's knocking on the door and it grew I get all the time oh my god you're gray and I'm like yeah because I can't get to the hairdresser <laughs> Jimmy, I'll come cut it will you thank you yeah, just don't ask Jill. Jim do you like beets yes use the dye from the beets after you cook it <laughs> Yeah. They don't have red, red hair. <laughs> oh, that's such a pretty purple. I'd love to know what the mordant is that you put with beet juice to make it stick to things. I know. Quills. Oh. Yeah. Beet juice. Like it doesn't need anything in it. Just sticks. Say that again. Um, Sandra, yeah. Any tips for um, trimming the hair in like in a circuit, like of the spear shape, or just well, like in a rounded motion? Start at the bottom. That's Lisa, right? Yeah. Start at the bottom. Like I, when I trim it, Lisa, I always just trim a row around the bottom thinking I'm going to have to trim it more anyway but I start with that bottom like the bottom area of the hair and I go all the way around and then once I get the bottom all trimmed then this then the sides and the top needs to come off and so I cut from the bottom You can see what I'm doing here. And then, you know, chances are you've got you've got more trimming to do. But if you trim little bits and then have to go back and do it again is better than trimming a whole big bunch and then going, oh, shit, I need more hair there. Look what I did, you know? Trim, you can trim more, but once it's gone, you can't put it back on. So then, and so then just keep trimming up the side until you get rid of all the long hair and you can see what you're doing better. And then trim, trim, trim. And really practice, 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 and you'll get your own groove. You know, you'll, you'll find what feels comfortable for you. I'm going to get hair on that cookie you brought me. If I don't, you just don't eat it. I'm going to eat it. Actually, I'm not going to add cake when we go to custard. If you if you he hasn't eaten yet? No, he hasn't eaten the cake. Oh, if you check out um caribou hair tufting online, like Pinterest has lots of it. And it, just just Google it even. There's so many things you can make with caribou hair. There's there's one guy, he, he does his work on a dark background, and and he just uses like light natural colored hair he doesn't dye his hair and he makes people like like Inuit people um he makes animals there, there's just so much you can do don't don't limit yourself to flowers although I think flowers is a good place to start to learn but from there spread your wings And don't forget to search Faye Chamberlain. Yeah, I'm 
Hey, Sandra. Hey, what? Did you, do you still have that quilt my mummy made you from Native Horizons? Edith quilt? King? Yeah, mummy made you a quilt. Hey, see you. See you, what, was, what quilt was it? I don't know. My brother just came in and he reminded me of um, that she had made you one. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's wrong. Maybe he is wrong. I don't. I don't think she ever made me a quilt. Okay. Like I, if she did, I would remember. Hmm. Now I'm going to have to go to my linen closet and look at all my quilts and everything that are in there. But I don't think so. I would remember. Would you though? I would. If Edith King made me something, you would I would remember. Kristen Ann. Yeah. Were you just going to ask me a question? I was, sorry. I was just figuring out. <laughs> um, so on my flower, I think I did the petals too far, like separated. So when you look at it like this, it looks like a flower, but then I wasn't sure if I should do it closer next time. Cause when I stretch it out, there's a lot of red in between them. You know what? You don't have to do it like I did mine. There's lots of different I've got a Charlie horse in the back of my leg. There's lots of different um, flowers in nature that look different. Okay. So you, you figure out, you know, you figure out for yourself how you want your flower to look, how you want the, how far apart you want the petals, how far apart you want them from the center button. Yeah. And, and you'll get your own groove in terms of how your flowers are going to look. How, how you how they how you envision them and how they turn out is sometimes not the same thing god yeah. sorry i no, have charlie horse right there. i have charlie horse right down the back <coughs> the back of my whole leg <coughs> that kind of hurts <laughs> you got somebody there with you sandra Christina, my daughter's here laughing at me. Oh. <laughs> oh, those aren't fun. I know that. Oh my goodness. Maybe it's from the chair I'm sitting on. Press it up mm -hmm. against the wall. Put your foot up against the wall and press. <clears throat> Holy jumping efforts. I was getting all kinds of Charlie horses and in in the, my doctor told me to um, and I was taking magnesium because that's that's what I was lacking right yeah and it really like last night I had none I took 300 milligrams and I was able to go to sleep if you put your foot on the cement floor and the I just, I just have to walk around for a minute while I get through my dentist room set up here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, those Charlie horses aren't that. And I had one and it was like in the front of my leg between my bone and I couldn't massage it out. Every mm -hmm. time I stood up, I almost fainted. Kim ended up calling the ambulance. It's like 8.30 at night. But Jeez, it I ended haven't up, had a Charlie horse in a long time. And it ended up being, I they upped my Lipitor and it was too much. Oh.
I think it's okay. So who's got more than one flower done? <laughs> Helen, how are you doing? I just got one done and then I got my centerpiece started. For the next one? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So that's as far as I've gotten. So you can try a cool thing too and cut the little piece of the leather that's attached to the hair, cut it in half on two different colors and then combine two colors and make a multicolored petal. You can do that. Okay. You know, like this one right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't, don't, don't hesitate to be creative. Sorry, I'm back. Um, I had to deal with my mother. Oh, oh the worst. Worst. How is she, Kim? She's okay. She doesn't understand that there's nothing open and you can't buy anything other than groceries. Mm -hmm. We're trying to explain to her that, no, you can't go in the dollar store or you can't go to Walmart and buy flower pots because she's looking for clay flower pots. And she's getting frustrated, but she's not understanding that those things aren't available right now. So she gets Aww. angry and she's like, well, I'll just find somebody else to buy them then. Don't worry about it. No, mom, you, you can't go anywhere and buy anything. It's only food. I mean, everything else is roped off. Like even in, the, even in our grocery store, they have a clothing aisle for children and that's roped off. You can't get in there. But she's, it's just not, I don't know. I don't know. What about, does she shop or do you shop on Amazon? I do. Yeah. I said, I'll look there and she got angry at Ashley and hung up. And I just bought some um, four inch pots for Barry. He's got tomato uh, plants started and he needs bigger pots. So I just got some for him from Amazon. Yeah. Well, I'll see what size she wants and I'll look tomorrow for her. I know that none of my I don't think any of my wholesalers that I deal with have clay flower pots, but I'll double check first. Right. Yeah. Do you have a home hardware up there or something? Because the hardware stores are still, um, well, I know down here in Eggersville they are, they're still selling, but you just have to phone in your order. Yeah. And then you can right. go pick it up. But yeah, Home Depot doesn't have those. And I don't know if Canadian Tire does or not. She's just not grasping that those things aren't available right now. And you right. know, Pat, Pat doesn't get it either, Kim. Yeah. It seems like the, maybe the older generation isn't like Pat doesn't even think about, she just gets in her car and goes to the mall, goes wherever she wants to go. Oh, I don't think about not going. I, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Mom's the same way. She's like, I need to go shopping for what? For those things that you hang over the door to hang your towels on. Mom, you can't. Why can't I? Who says I can't? I just, I don't know. Maybe I'll send her over to Pat's and they can hang out together. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know if her, if she's not understanding it or her stroke has caused this, her mini stroke. And, and she's just, it's not grasping. And I have yeah. to remind myself not to get frustrated with her, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Because that's not going to help. No, 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 no. I, uh, Arlen and Ian get frustrated with her. So I have to kind of <gasps> take a deep breath and think, okay, so how do I make her understand that it's, it's very scary out there right now? You've got lung cancer. You can't go out there. Yeah, and you know, the variants of this this virus are scary, scary yeah. things. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Arlen and Ian just don't understand why she's not getting it. They're not used to this 85 year old mom that's had a mini stroke and her memory isn't like it used to be. They're used to that strong woman that can do anything and overcome right. any obstacle, right? And they're really right. having a hard time. Like Ian doesn't get in contact with her that much because he's having a hard time accepting this mom and not the right. mom he knows. Like you went through that. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard. So yeah, so when she calls and, and you know, you don't answer, or you're busy and you can't get to the phone. She thinks that's personal, that you don't want to talk to her right away. And, and right. I, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I had to step away from the computer for a few minutes and just take a breath, Kim. Take a breath. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. People understand that have gone through it or going through it. So, you know. <laughs> Caitlin, how are you doing with your testing? Where is Caitlin? I'm here. I'm still trimming my first flower. Laura, show us yours. Pardon? Not Don't see some. Yeah, sure. I just, I, I was finishing the other leaf. Wow. You guys. That's beautiful. Whoa. I, I want to try and make it smaller because I find it's like really fluffy. I'd like to make one like more thick, like more, like smaller puffs, smaller oh. puffs. You know how you do that? Smaller. <laughs> Trim more. Trim more. Trim more. I think, yeah, I think when I was setting it up, I had them far enough. Like I, I trimmed up the first one big and then I had to kind of stay with that size, right? Yep. So the next one I do, I want to make, try and make it smaller. So make your center button smaller too. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to start that. Heidi, yeah. how are you doing? Well, I'm still working. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it the first one. I just I don't know what I was doing. Um, I think I'm not using the right scissors for one thing, but it's um, I'll turn my camera on here a second. Oh, those are pretty. That well, looks good. So I was thinking it, it's, um, I don't know if they're too long or if uh, when I was twist, like twisting and then tying off, whether I loosened it up or something. I know a couple of them were, um, they were thinner than the other ones. And that might be what I did too. Okay. The, so I have the, to tell the you. Tuft, the tuft was thinner than the other one. Okay. I probably made 50 flowers before I made one that I was happy with. And now, now I'm kind of happy with every one that I make. So you'll get better at it as you go along. You know, don't beat yourself up that your flower might not look perfect, your first flower. Like, holy moly. This takes a lot of practice to get it. Asa, how are you doing? But I am definitely enjoying. Miigwech. Good. Good, good, good. I can't see it. Chris, how are you doing? Me? The other Chris on here. Oh, it's okay. Queen Anne. Doing good? 
it's coming along good. Good, good. Everybody enjoying it? A lot harder it. than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> I love the company. I love seeing you guys. I miss seeing you. Do you know what I really miss? I really miss hugs. Yeah. Oh, yes. Like I hug everybody. And right now I can't hug anybody except Barry and Christina. I miss the historical gatherings up in the credit. That's what I miss. I really miss those. I, it really, and the powwows. Yeah. Oh, that's what I Jimmy, miss too. I miss, the you. I miss you too. Yeah, we got to see everybody at the gathering, right? Like everybody would come down and it's just, yeah, you feel totally disconnected from them. Yeah, it's, it's not the same. This is the second year of not having it. And it's really, it's been really hard. The first yes. year was hard. The second year is twice as bad. Right. Faith, did we cancel our power too? Actually, you know, I was just going to... Um, text auntie and and ask her if she wanted me to put out a um cancellation oh no we were hoping I, would be okay. I, I seen that six nations canceled theirs already yeah yeah we were in meetings we last yeah i just wasn't sure what what you were planning yet yeah it's not safe well, I'm coming up anyhow. I'll be the only one at the powwow grounds dancing. <laughs> we could distance ourselves and have a visit. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the one. Can... The MC in the arena director, the head male, the head female, the veteran. <laughs> People will say that Kim. Yeah. She dances to her own drum, that girl. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't mess with crazy. That's what I tell Tom's cousin all the time. Don't mess with crazy. I think you should. I think you should make that a video. Like go out to your powwow grounds and get somebody to like <laughs> film you in each one of those roles and just like cut it all together into one kind of montage. <laughs> I will film you. That's hilarious. Yes, are you up for it? Absolutely. See? Chris will you have you have to dress each part too, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm oh, she will. Dancing. We'll get on Bob Chiplo be there with his his fish his fish. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, we, Kate, I think uh -huh. Kate and we were talking about um trying to bring him down to to the Mississaugas of the Credit. Yeah, I was in discussions with Bob, and um, uh, <laughs> I had it planned for May. I thought May May would be okay, and then it was like, oh no, that's coming up too soon. Like. I told them we'll have to push it off to maybe like, if we don't have a powwow, I mean, we could do a community fish fry dinner um, or in the fall time sometime. July, we usually have our community picnic. Yeah. Oh, us too. You might have to come to our, our winter camping. <laughs> yeah. Mark imagine, imagine, him. imagine what it'll be like when we can start visiting and traveling again. <laughs> we'll never be home. We won't know First, how to act. <laughs> right? <laughs> First stop, I'm going to Joanne's in the States to buy fabric. I just want to like preach at Joanne's. I miss Joanne's so much. Oh. Well, I've got this little thing worked out now. Um, I order online from Joann's and my girlfriend who lives in Pennsylvania goes and picks it up for me. And my nephew who lives across the road goes right past my friend's house. He's a long haul truck driver. Yeah, he's a long haul truck driver. He goes right past the turn to her house every week. <laughs> Oh, that's and so, awesome. <laughs> and so he brings he brings fabric home for me. Oh, wow. But uh, but it is different buying fabric online that you can't feel. 
and you can't tell the quality of it. Like I've got some 100% cotton that isn't, like it's not good enough quality to do anything with, but you know, online it just said 100% cotton, but, but the quality is not good at all. However, the most recent trip was with uh, pre-quilted fabric for making bags, uh, but like bundle bags. And oh my goodness, I got 33 yards of quilted fabric. <laughs> oh. I was like a, I was like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the other spectrum of that, if you're a, um, a store owner and people, you know, send you a message that they want to buy something it can be quite hard because I had a lady say, I need blue beads. So can you send me some blue beads? And I said, I have 20 different shades of Delica blue beads just alone. I right. have 20 different shades of size 10 of blue. I have 20 different shades, size 11 of blue. What shade are you looking at? <laughs> I'm angry with me. Oh. She was like, just never mind. And I was like, but if I send you the wrong shade, then you're going to send it back and it's going to cost money for both of us. And the whole purpose of opening my store is I was tired of ordering beads online and not getting what I ordered, right? Not getting the shade color that I wanted or the color that I wanted. So if you could go on John B, look at the numbers, look at the colors and let me know what that number is, I can send it to you. And she just gave up on me, I guess, cause she didn't answer me. So oh. it's frustrating on both sides of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now that people have, um, <clears throat> we can't go to the dollar store and get crafty stuff cause that was real good for people's mental health, eh? My sister got me into yes. crafting and, and now it's like, I did this, um, I did this uh, bear cause I'm a bear. I put a piece of um, this beautiful wood behind it. And it was like a metal cut out bear in the forest. And I um, painted the, the wood and I, I screwed the, the uh, cause it's a, it's a door um, wreath. Yeah. I got over 800 comments on my post on Dollarama. Yeah. Everybody loves it. Yeah. But wow. now you can't go there. I know. Oh, well, you can, you can go there, but you can only buy food and it's just yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Because mm. I ran in there the other day to pick up hooks, to hang stuff on, on the pegboards and stuff. And all those aisles were taped off and I could only buy like food. Well, I didn't need food. I'd just right. been to the grocery store. So, and that's what I'm trying to get my mom to understand too, is you can't buy those things right now at the dollar store mall. Yeah, I know it's, it's frustrating. It's very, very, and I can only sell, like people can only come into my store that are from Hiawatha. Yeah. So I have people like Herb Lake is my biggest, my biggest um, buyers. They can't come and they're frustrated. Like Heidi spends more time at my store than I do. <laughs> you're going to have to do, you're going to have to do a, um, like the uh, uh, Oak Hill market. You're going to have to have live, live, um, selling nights and stuff like that and hold up what you have yeah that's a good idea Faye. yeah it's they're hard making, they're making tons of money yeah what do they do they have a they have um like say on monday wednesday friday they have selling nights right and they do it for like four hours a night and they sell all kinds of stuff because they're a market right so they have all kinds of stuff in there and man, people are just buying up stuff. Like they have everything and anything. Wow. Yeah. So they got like, um, 
two people one person sits at the a computer and he's watching the feed go and they're saying okay green legging sold and then he marks down the name and they do all, coordinate all this stuff together and um yeah they're, they're selling 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 there you go kim yeah god knows my back room is full of beads right now <laughs> i have more beads than i think i could probably supply john bead right now because they're low <laughs> on everything they sure are and i can't get beading thread right now white beading thread Another should. thing, Kim, that I've seen people do is um, hold, like put together crafting bundles and then they sell like raffle tickets on it for like $10 a piece and people are like really buying those up too. That's a good idea too, Case. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I could put together bundles of beads and... Yeah, like even starter kits too. If you put together a starter kit with some um, pellet and a couple different shades of, or a couple different colors of beads and needles, like everything just to get started. Yeah. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, it is a very good idea. I'm lucky in a way that I don't have overhead and I pay cash for everything that I order. Like I e-transfer oh. all my my um wholesalers so i'm very lucky that way that i don't have that that overhead that i have to deal with or that i don't have employees because i'd feel really bad i'd probably end up paying them even if they didn't work <laughs> kim do you have a facebook page for your store um yeah i do i was gonna say you could sell through there too yeah, that's a good idea, Casey. I'm going to look at that this weekend as I'm sitting in my store. Wishing for people to come in. Wishing for people to come in. I have the cutest masks coming in for, for um, adults and it's got the Sasquatch on it. I'm so anxious to see them. And we just got those brackets in that go inside the mask to keep it. Kind oh of yeah, they're nice. Yeah. I like those. So Tom said, what are we making on the brackets? And I said, 22 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Kim. <I was> like, <laughs> We're going to be millionaires. You are. But that was well, we the purpose. You can't wear lipstick when you have masks on because it gets all over the place. Yeah, this is called lipstick saver brackets or something. So, oh, hey, I'm gonna have to buy some from you. Yeah. They just so masks, in. masks are the new lipstick. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna put lipstick on the outside of my mask. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> it's been really good. The last year has been really good on my lipstick bill. Yeah. Makeup in general. <laughs> yeah. All I wear anymore is lipstick. Because, you know, I'm that age now. I put on face cream and then it's all over my mask in a couple hours because you're sweating with it and it's all over stuck to your mask. And I'm like, ah. Oh. It was quite something uh, the other day going in for an eye appointment and trying glasses on with a mask on. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, I had that same experience. So you know what I did? I took my mask off so I could see what I looked like with the glasses on. She told me that I could take the glasses to the car and look at them and try them on there. So I just did it. I didn't ask. <laughs> I was like, my dad's in the car. He won't give me good constructive feedback what's that saying do now and ask for forgiveness later or something yep it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission yes there you go
How's everybody doing with their tufting? Everybody doing okay? Christina gives me a thumbs up. She's not even doing one. <laughs> <laughs> I am beating. What are you making me? Not for you. It's for Ethan. No, it's actually for Lauren. Oh. 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 I've only been working on it for like a year. <laughs> Look at this flower. Oh, oh that's whoa. nice. Oh, I need to put the other petals on here and here, but good job, Sandra. I think it's okay. I think I'm gonna like it too. I put mine up for now. It was making too much of a mess. Yeah. I don't handle messes very well. So if you want to do something like a hummingbird or like another kind of bird, uh, I would, what, when I do a bear, like I draw it on the fabric first and then I fill that in with hair. Like, you know this one I showed you that, that I did with this poppy here? So I outlined that poppy first and then I filled, I filled it in the, with the hair so that I knew I was putting the hair exactly where it needed to go. So there's a little tip. And if you, if you get so that you, you want to do this and you get yourself some caribou hair or moose hair, the really long hair, like there's some hair on a caribou that's probably four or five inches long. I save those really long ones for the stems for flowers. If I'm doing, you know, like, like I showed you the stems on that piece on the antler. If you're doing stems like that, that long hair is really nice to do that. You can put it on and then, you know, put your, your sinew on either side and pull it down and, and tie that hair. So the long hair is good for that. When you, when you, um, Contact Bearskin World tomorrow to buy your first caribou hide. Let them know that you want one with that's got some nice long hair on it and some nice white hair on it. Have you ever tried like um like a deer tail, like the white like a fluff like the the white part of the deer tail? I have not a, a deer tail. A, I haven't tried it, but a deer tail is. The, the hair is really coarse. It is coarse, eh? But I bet it would work perfect. Yeah. Maybe I, yeah. I'm, I'll try and see if I could get a hold of one. I know my, yes. yeah, my, um, my mother-in-law owns the store in um, Nipissing on the highway. She's got yeah. one on the highway. Well, I mean, no one's probably seen it, but you know. Is um, it have, called Soul? Something for the Soul? Flyers for the Soul, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. my my mom in law, and uh, I was I was thinking Kim, you should uh, you should chat with her because the amount of people that call in and say I want blue or purple beads, and then get mad when you don't know exactly what you're talk what they're talking about is like unreal, Kim. You guys yeah. get, like a support group. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll I'll do <laughs> I'll do uh, Zoom with her for support. Commiserate. <laughs> and they but, get so she's, angry. She's, it's just phenomenal how mad they get at you I'm like mom is that you no <laughs> your your mother-in-law has a website with all of her beads on the website so people yeah, it's a lot different it's a lot different now but even people who it's sometimes it's um people use the website to do all their ordering and they have and then they then they come uh, to the store and then they have then they bring it to the door uh, oh, okay. Before that, or if anybody, they'll still do phone orders and then EMTs for people who right. don't know how to use the website. Right. Yeah. Right. I just got some beads from her. I needed some size sixes in specific colors. And I got what I could get from Kim, but 
then I got some from your mother-in-law. Yeah, they. When I first, me and my husband first started uh, dating, it was uh, only like one wall of beads. It was crazy. It's been come a long way. Oh, here he wants to say hi. Say hi, bud. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? No more. No more. At Nokomis's house. You're at Nokomis's house? Yeah, we haven't gone to Nokomis's house in a while because, yeah, of, yeah it's rough. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you, heard me talking, you heard me talking about her, right? No, we were just in a video call. Oh, they were chatting with her. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go and walk them to bed. I'll be back. All right. The other thing that, that you, like, I, I think most people have sinew. And so I think sinew is an easily accessible thing to use to tie your knots. But you could use like a, a heavyweight um, thread kind of cord. You don't have to use sinew, you know, as long as it's something that you can tie really tight, that you can pull really tight um, and make make those good knots in so it's not going to be loose but i i think most of us use sinew for something uh when faye taught me she taught me with cord um, it was like a really heavy duty thread kind of stuff Sam, is it called bearskin rugs? No. Bearskin world rugs? Oh, maybe. Is, maybe. is it on Facebook? I don't know that. Okay. I don't know if it's on Facebook. Um, do, did oh. you pull it up? Yeah, but all I'm getting is bearskin rugs, bearskin. Yeah, bearskin rugs. Oh, put just a second. Skin. Yeah, I put in bare skin world, but I don't know if I'm going to lose you off of my phone. Well, but I'm going to. I was just going to put I'm it gonna... in the chat for people. I'm going to find it right now. It's, it's bearskinrugs.com. Okay. Yep. I just checked my. Um, my email. Bearskin World, Kim. Sorry, Bear. Bearskin okay, World. guys, gonna say good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks a lot. Night. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I didn't even lose anybody. I did that without getting my. Okay. Like line disconnected. Good job, Mom. I know. I'm like a tech savvy old woman. Oh, I'm awful for it. Somebody said oh, take a Mom. screenshot, and I was like, I don't even know what you mean. Oh, I can do that. Not me. There's a lot <clears throat> of things I can't do, though. It did when when Laura was on here. Get everybody to turn their camera on. That's a class you could put on. Is technology stuff. Yes. <laughs> technology for old. They talked about doing that at the Life Center for Mom and Pat and those ladies and, and just doing your basic computer teachings. The but thing course, for Pat, though, is that you could show her right now. And she'll forget. And, 
and tomorrow she wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. She wouldn't remember that you even showed her. Yeah. That's mom too. And you know, Kim, we're just in line next. Oh, I know. I know. I remember when I had my heart surgery, um, about two months after I said to the doctor, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like my memory is getting really bad and blah, blah, blah. And I can't remember things some days. And he said, that's part of heart surgery. Did they not tell you that? And I said, no. And he said, you, they did. You probably forgot. <laughs> but I, right? guess that, I guess that's part of the, they tell you that, you know, you may have some memory loss because of the heart surgery. <laughs> And did that, know. did that memory function come back? No. What didn't? No. There's still things that you could tell me right now and an hour from now, I wouldn't remember. How old are you, Kim? 60. Hmm. Yeah. But it's been that way for the past eight years since I've had my since, surgery. Since your heart surgery? Yeah. Bugger, bugger, eh? Yeah. But it's one of the things they talk about because after your heart surgery, this group gets together at the hospital because like 20 are done at the same day, right? Right. So they bring you all, all into the room and they sit down and they talk to you about your heart surgery and what to expect and what not to expect and what you should do and what you shouldn't do and what to look forward in the future. And, and I guess one of them was memory and I didn't remember I don't remember them talking about that at all. Wow. I'm so like convinced they didn't. It's like your brother just had that shoulder surgery. Yeah. And he's not supposed to be doing anything. And he was out cutting his grass yesterday. Uh, yeah. 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 Like my mother, he says, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Right. Well, I wanted to go push him off of it. When, when you you're not healing tell me again how people told you not to do it <laughs> right like literally i was at home cam and i heard the lawnmower and i was like jesus christ arlen you're not supposed to be doing that yeah well yeah. i said to him why don't you talk to sam give her he did. A he, oh did he has kidding? lots and i said and ask her like how her recovery went and what she had to do and what different things that she had to do what she, what she found worked and what didn't work. He says he's not in a lot of discomfort. He hasn't had a lot of discomfort since the surgery. Oh, that's awesome. Good for him, man. Oh, man. Yeah. But I think that because he's doing so much and he's on the pain medication, once he stops the pain medication, it's going to hit him. That could be. I, I tried to, to not take much pain medication and... I found that I just couldn't, like I couldn't go at night without pain medication. Yeah. Sleeping was the worst. Yeah. And then when you don't sleep, the next day's not good. Well, he says he's just taking it at night for, you know, to sleep, help sleep because the pain's bad. But during yeah. the day, he's, he's fine. Oh, good for him. Well... I don't know. I think because he's done so much, the pain's twice as bad at night. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. The last conversation I had with Dr. Wong, that's who did his surgery and mine. Dr. Wong, <coughs> so it was a phone conversation. He said, how's the pain now? I said, it's like, there's basically I don't have any. I said, well, one day I ironed for seven hours straight. He said, you did what? I said, I ironed for seven hours. Why? <laughs> so I told him. I was getting skirt, uh, ribbon skirts kits, kits together. And he said, you know what? If you ironed for seven hours straight and you had a little discomfort at night, call me if you have any issues because you're obviously doing fine yeah 
but it was a long time, like from surgery until he, he said, just carry on like normal now. It seemed like a long time for you because you're always so busy. Oh, seemed very long. Yeah. I went kayaking the other day, Kim. I know. I need to now put a rope in my kayak. <laughs> so she so can I can tow her back. Yeah, that that was that wasn't a good decision on my part to go as far as we went. Yeah. That was really hard on my shoulder. Well, it didn't help that the lake changed really quick and then the wind picked up and it was really hard to paddle back. And that's when we left spring on Rice Lake is that that lake changes so quickly. Yeah. Oh, just in the blink of an eye, it like changes. We were less than an hour and it was smooth as glass when we went out and we like basically just went around Herkimer's to like over to the marsh. Yeah. And that's all we went. And, uh, Mom's like, I don't want to go this far. Like, the, like the I snakes. don't want to go as far as Snake Island, which is what we just named the island because there was a snake last summer. And I was like, okay. And then we practically paddled to it. And then by the time we turned around, it was just so rough. That yeah. Yeah. Because in the spring, this lake is so unpredictable. Yeah. Look Next at my time. other flower. Oh, Sam, that's beautiful. Look at that. Now, mm. did you join two colors or did? That's the nope, dye. That's, that's the dye. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's the petal there or the dye, the hair. Uh -huh. Do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> I know I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I knew what you meant. So I feel like I I um since I'm not seeing anybody and doing much, I I feel like I forgot how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I lose the words I'm trying to find. Although I think that's an aging thing too. Well, when you're when you're married for so long, you finish each other's sentences. So Barry and you probably do that all day long. We have a whole a whole um, dialogue that we each understand. <laughs> today, today he told me uh, he saw a picture of me, an old picture of me. He said, "Holy jumpins! If I was single, I'd marry that girl." <laughs> And I said, if that girl was single, she'd marry you. <laughs> and I just sat and rolled my eyes. <laughs> hey, Kim and Casey, I've actually got to run. I have another uh, meeting starting up <laughs> at nine o'clock. Um, uh, are you folks okay to, to hang yeah. in and do that? Okay. Um, the recording should still come to my computer. I'm using a different platform. All right. Yeah, no worries. All right. Thanks, so everyone. Sean, have a great one. We have. Do we have? Does somebody have to log out of this or end the meeting? Casey, uh, Casey will be able to do it. I made okay, her the perfect. host, and then okay. the um, recording will come to my computer, and I'll put it up on YouTube uh, hopefully tomorrow afternoon. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Miigwech, bye, everybody. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.